I'd like to take a look at an example of using energy conservation. And in this example, we'll be designing a bungee jump fundraiser uh, using energy conservation, conservation to determine the spring constant of our bungee. Here you can read the problem statement. What we have is you are designing a bungee jump that your physics professor is going to uh, participate in. But of course, he's not going to jump unless he knows it's safe. So you've got some some uh, conditions that you've got to work with. For one thing, your bungee is 42 meters above a pool, and your uh, professor is two meters tall. So you've got a height of 40 meters to work with. Because, of course, uh, your professor doesn't really want to end up with jello on his face. So what you have is you have a bungee cord that's going to stretch for thir or that's going to that is 30 meters long. So the professor will fall 30 meters before the bungee begins to stretch. And then you want it to stretch only 10 meters so that the 30 meters of the fall plus the 10 meters of the bungee stretching uh, gives you the 40 meters that you've got to work with. Now, what we need is we need a bungee cord that will stop your professor within that 10 meters. And your job is to figure out what is the spring constant for this job, given the fact that your professor has a mass of about 70 kilos. Now that you understand the setup for the problem, take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can't set up the problem, drawing pictures and labeling your pictures, and see if you can't solve, your, uh, solve this problem yourself. Once you've done that, then restart the video and I'll show you how I solved it. You can see the beginnings of my setup. I've looked at this and I said there were really three pictures. There's the beginning, where the professor hasn't stepped off the the stand yet. There's the middle where he's falling through the air. That's where he's going to be uh, have some velocity downwards. And then there's the end where we want that his velocity comes to zero, so that he stops just above the jello. And so uh, I drew a picture for each of those stages in our in this uh, described motion. From here, I want to begin to label some things that I know. For example, I know the professor is going to step off. He's not going to jump. He's going to step off. So his in initial velocity at this stage is going to be zero, just as he steps off the, uh, the gantry or whatever this platform is called. And from there, I think since there are just gravity pulling downwards on the professor and there is this spring going to be involved so I'll have a spring force then that makes energy conservation a good candidate so to remind you what energy conservation is or how we might use it energy conservation tells us that if we can find the initial mechanical energy of our system so that's the initial kinetic plus the initial uh, potential and any non-conservative work that might happen between our our initial and final states, then that has to equal the mechanical energy initially plus whatever work was done by non-conservative forces has to equal our final mechanical energy. So our final potential plus kinetic. This is going to be most useful when we can show that our, non, uh, our work done by non-conservative forces is zero. And so in this problem, we have two forces, gravity and springs, and both of those are conservative forces. So we know that the non-conservative work is going to be zero, and makes then all we have to do is determine what's our initial and final uh, potential and kinetic energies. So to do that, how do we go about doing that? We know that our initial velocity is zero, and that's going to simplify things. I'm going to have to do some more setup, though, before I start writing down my energies.
For example, I need to know where the zero of my coordinate system is. I'm going to have to pick an x equals zero position. Now, I know that I'm going to have, you'll notice I've labeled the top and the fall where the where the uh, bungee cord just begins to, to stretch. And this is my 30 meters through which the, uh, the professor is going to fall. Since this is the natural length of my spring, I'm going to set this to be where my x equals 0 point. So that this uh, point up here where I start is now x equals l. And the point down here where I end up is x equals minus d. Okay, So that gives me uh, a coordinate system from which to work. And again, I'll remind you just by choosing this natural length of the spring to be the position where x equals zero, it avoids some mathematical pitfalls that the equations in your textbook uh, don't really clue you into. Once I have that marked, now I can begin to write down my initial uh, potential and kinetic energies. My initial potential energy is going to be mg. My spring has no, is unstretched. So the potential in my spring is going to be equal to zero. And my initial uh, potential energy is just going to be the potential energy of gravity. Uh, gravitational potential energy, you might remember, is we can calculate by the formula that it's the mass of my system times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in my height from wherever I set some zero point. And I'm going to have to pick my zero, and I haven't done that yet. And just to remind you as well, the potential energy from a spring is going to be one half my spring constant, remember that's the thing we're after, times the uh, uh, distance I am from the zero of my spring uh, potential energy as well. So I'm going to have to pick the zero of my gravitational potential energy and the zero of my spring potential energy. So let's do that quickly. I'm going to set the lowest point in my uh, in my system, so right here, as where the gravitational potential energy equals zero, which means that when I get to the bottom of my bungee, I should have no gravitational potential energy. I'm going to set the zero of my spring potential to be where my uh, my natural length of my spring is. And so now I can finish writing out my initial potential energy. There's no spring potential. And my height above uh, the zero of gravitational potential energy is this full height. So that is um, L plus D. OK, now I've got my initial uh, potential energy. And my initial kinetic energy is quite straightforward. It's just 1 half my mass times my velocity squared, and I don't have any velocity, so it's zero. And so I get as my initial mechanical energy just mass times gravity times this L plus D, this 40 meters. And I could calculate that out. I'm going to keep things algebraic for the moment, though. But you know that this is just a number. This would be 70 meters times 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, times, or, sorry, 70 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 40 meters, and whatever that would come out to be, you could calculate it. F with the second position, you know, I may not even actually care about this. If I wanted to, uh, for example, I know that I'm falling here with some speed. Uh, I might call this V2. So that v, v1 is 0, v2 is something. And I don't know what it is. I could calculate it. For example, I know my potential energy now um, at this point is going to be uh, just some, again, still no stretch in my spring. So just gravitational potential energy, that's going to be mg. And my distance from my zero, that's going to be uh, d. 
And then that's that's my initial potential energy or my potential energy at two. My kinetic energy at two would be one half mv2 squared. And so if I wanted to find out what my speed as I'm falling is, I could take my uh, mechanical energy from one. That's this mechanical energy. And I could say that has to equal the me mechanical energy from two. And if I set that up, I could find out what my speed was. Now, maybe I don't want to know that. In fact, to answer my question, I, I'm not interested in that. In that que That's not the answer I'm after for the question that was being asked. So I'm going to go on. And I want to find now this final position, this position three. My potential energy at three. Now, this one's a little bit harder. Not that much, actually, because my gravitational potential energy is zero at this lowest point. So all of my potential energy is now in this stretched spring. This is now stretched. And so it's all there. So it's one and a half. My spring constant, which I don't know, I can't calculate this one. This one isn't. Uh, this one uh, energy won't be a number because it has some unknown quantity in it. Uh, times the distance from my zero squared. So that un that where the zero of my potential is, that was my unstretched position. So that's going to be here, and I might say that that's d squared. Now you might say, well, Dr. Merrill, how can we get away with this? This is minus d. How does that work? Well, remember, this is a delta y, and this is squared in the spring potential. So the delta y uh, for each of these is I I need the change. I need my position minus the position of my zero, and so I'm going to have position minus d to position L, and that's where I got this D plus L, because it's going to be L minus minus D. And for uh, this other one here, well, it's going to be 0 minus a minus D. And so my, my, uh, my minus signs are, end up uh, having a double negative there. So don't worry, we have accounted for the fact that this is a negative d. And, and then, of course, in my in my um, spring potential, it gets squared anyway, so the minus uh, sign goes away. So we've got our uh, potential energy. Now we want our kinetic energy. And hopefully, remember, we want to stop. So hopefully, our speed at this third position is zero so that our kinetic energy is zero. And with that, we've got our equations. We now know that this final mechanical energy has to be the same as this initial mechanical energy. So if I added my initial potential plus kinetic energy, that has to equal my final potential plus kinetic energy. Now that we've determined what our initial potential and kinetic energy is, what our final potential and kinetic energy is, and we've checked to find out what our non-conservative work is, or we've checked to make sure that it's zero, uh, now we can just populate our equation. Uh, I'm going to have on the one side my sum of initial values. So that's uh, my mass times gravity plus this uh, 40 meters uh, and that that's it for this side. That's going to be equal to the stuff on the other side, which is one half my spring constant. That's what I'm after times the distance that I fall squared, right? And so, or sorry, that's the 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 distance the bungee stretches squared. Now it's just a bit of algebra to solve this. I can multiply both sides by two. I can divide both sides. Uh, by a d squared, uh, 
And when I do that, I'm going to be left with on one side the k, which is what I'm after, is 2 times 70 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared uh, times 40 meters divided by 10 meters squared. And so when I plug in my numbers, I got 549 newtons per meter. That's the spring constant that I'm going to need. Okay. So you can see how we went about solving this problem. We took quite a bit of time setting up the problem as usual so that we could sort of establish what our picture looked like initially, what our final picture looked like, and what the forces on our system moving us from initial to final were. Uh, we checked and made sure that these were all, uh, that the only thing that was doing any work was gravity or a spring, and that let us just define my mechanical energy and, and that that mechanical energy is conserved. And then with that, then we just simply wrote out our terms. What was our initial potential energy? What was our initial final, uh, our initial kinetic energy? What was our final potential energy? What was our final kinetic energy? We had to make some choices along the way. We had to make sure we chose where to put our gravitational potential energy. And we typically want that to be at the lowest point in our system. We also had to choose where to put the zero of our spring potential energy. And we generally want that to be at the um, the the natural length of our of our spring, and we also wanted to make sure, just to avoid some mathematical pitfalls, that that was also where the zero of our coordinate system, the origin of our coordinate system, ended up being. So by doing this, we got ourselves all set up, and we could solve this problem, and we got our result. Okay. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use energy conservation to address different situations, especially situations in, involving springs. If you have any questions, come see me.